Good afternoon, my beautiful, bountiful best friends, and welcome back to the guide. In today's episode, we're going to carve out an amethyst farm. But before this episode, aha, that's right, before this episode, we've got some catching up to do. In between episodes, I slid down to the mine shaft. My thinking was pretty straightforward. I'm going to head down here and do a little bit of mining so I can do some crafting later on. I turned a corner, and then right in front of me was one of the most beautiful, smoothest blocks of all time. I got so excited, I couldn't believe what I found, so I went up and mended my tool. I guess there's no better way to celebrate a wonderful, exciting, beautiful find than with a perfect brand new pickaxe and an axe too, it's pretty nice. So this amethyst geode that I found, it's located right over here, and I did a little bit of investigative work. The coordinates of this geode, I haven't broke into it yet, but the coordinates of this geode is smack dab underneath or really close to the cookie farm, so it might kind of be beautiful. Now, what I really, really would like to see here is the inside of this geode. For the very first time ever, Geo Geode, please be a lot. Whoa. Oh, phew. I got the block. <laughs> I got to be careful. So matter of fact, I think our good dear friend Markiplier is maybe, maybe perhaps just a little bit too good for today's episode. We'll switch it over to an iron pickaxe. Amethyst Geode, look at you! You are like the dream Amethyst Geode for a farm. You're a tall lad, a handsome lad, very big, round, uh, voluminous. <laughs> yes, yes, all those good big words. This Amethyst Geode right here, and look at it. All of the, the shards, the crystals, they're fully grown. That means this thing is gonna be fully loaded in anytime we're over at our base. And uh, long story short, this is like the most beautiful purple haired beauty that we could have ever dreamed of. And the perfect candidate for an amethyst farm. Amethyst farm, Shamethyst farm. We're gonna go all over how to actually make an amethyst farm today. But first, a big question for you. Episode number 50 is like so close now. I think it'll end up dropping like next week, a little bit after, something like that. Should I do a tour? Or should I wait till like day 500? What do you think? Now the hardest part about making an amethyst farm is to be honest, you're gonna be locating an amethyst geode. If you have no clue where an amethyst geode is, well look, simply put, if you don't know where to start, you literally cannot start this build. Now this episode is not really all about locating an amethyst geode or nothing like that. I stumbled upon it, I got a little bit lucky. If you're not as lucky as me though, I got three quick things. Thing number one, you do exactly what I'm doing right now. Go down into your caves and do a little bit of a caving. Could be in a mine shaft, could be in a gigantic large cave. Because an amethyst geode is an underground structure that will tend to be found underground, the more time you spend underground, the more likely you are to find one. My second big hack is gonna be the ocean. More specifically, the deepest ocean that you could find inside of your world. If you're absolutely struggling on finding an amethyst geode and you just need amethyst for your next build, find any kind of deep ocean and look around down on the bottom of it. Maybe use a little bit of night vision potion to see clean through the water. In one of the Minecraft updates, the devs actually lowered the generation of the amethyst shield, so they pop up on the ocean floor a little bit less nowadays than they used to. But you never know, sometimes the geode could generate a little bit higher and you'll see it from a ravine on the floor or just on the floor. Last but not least, our good dear friend, Chunk Base. You could go ahead and use Chunk Base to actually locate an Amethyst Geode with the Amethyst Geode Finder. If you'd like a little bit more on how to locate, find an Amethyst Geode, then you just let me know down below. And I could totally, a little bit later on in the series, circle back around and maybe make an episode on finding more Amethyst. So one of the most beautiful things about our precious little Amethyst Geode right here is the fact that it's going to always be loaded in at our base. You see, when it comes to growing and farming amethyst, aka this stuff right here, it's time. Unfortunately, there is no way to speed up the growth of amethyst crystal. All you could do is hope that you're located near an amethyst geode and let it be loaded in and let these crystals grow. But check this out. One quick search of the word amethyst inside of the creative inventory and we'll find all of these different small growing stages of amethyst, the fully grown one, the shard itself, that's the true prize we're farming today, and then two different blocks. So Amethyst, it's got a lot of cool, unique things about it. Like, listen. Quite literally, it's music to my ears. This is the plain old normal block of Amethyst, the one that we're gonna be able to farm. This one right here, Budding Amethyst, is very special, very breakable, and very profitable. Budding Amethyst is a unique block only located inside of Amethyst Geodes, located inside of your world. If you're looking to get your hands on this, terrible news, my friend, you cannot get your hands on this thing. The budding amethyst block is quite literally like a spawner, except this time only for amethyst. You can't pick it up. 
and you can't silk touch it either. Attempting to use a piston, or maybe say a sticky piston, to move this block, and it shatters as well. It's very, very breakable, so we need to be careful. The cool thing about this block, though, is check it out. On every single face of the budding amethyst block, there is a small crack. And on every single face from that small crack, amethyst can actually grow. So like say, let's say this block right here, the front side was exposed, so we got a crystal there, side is exposed, we got a crystal there, and look at this, over there, crystal as well. If I were to say, maybe take this block out and open that up too, give it a little bit of time, a crystal could totally grow there as well. And actually, down below it as well, that same crack is going to be there. If I were to say, locate every single amethyst block that is budding and expose its crack to the entire world, then I could maximize the amount of amethyst that I could grow inside of one single farm. And so, that right there, that beautiful, beautiful spot right there is exactly where our amethyst farming op begins today. Step number one for setting up an amethyst farm is locate a geode. After you've located a geode, make sure that geode is a little bit bigger. The, the, the bigger, the better here. You see how it works is when an amethyst geode generates, it could be big or small. No matter the size of the geode, 8.3% of blocks inside of that geode will be replaced with budding amethyst. If you think about it straightforward and do the math a little bit, that's going to mean the bigger the geode, the more budding amethyst you'll have inside of that geode. And <laughs> no, no, look, I can't help it. I don't think I've ever gotten so lucky. Not to brag so much today, but not only do we have a gigantic amethyst geode, but no, 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 even better. We're Titan champions here. We have a gigantic amethyst geode that is smack dab underneath our base, always loaded in. All I need to do is clear this out, fancy up the room a little bit, make it look good. And this could become our favorite build, Waterville Farm of the whole world. Only time will tell. So look at this. So one of the cool things about digging out this amethyst geode today is I am going to rake in the amethyst profit. I already have over a stack of blocks and a little bit more. And they're going to grow the entire time I'm down here. The other nice thing is we got a couple other handy, beautiful blocks we could maybe use in the build today. We got basalt in here. We got even better calcite blocks. Oh, man. I hope they do what they did to tough to calcite in 1.21 as well. Please. So for today's farm, I want to keep it nice and safe over here. I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and block that off, block that off, and then over here, block this off as well. I absolutely don't want any creepers coming in here because just like with a normal spawner, budding amethyst blows up and it's gone. I also highly recommend using maybe not your highly efficient efficiency 5 netherite or diamond pickaxe for clearing out your amethyst geode. Earlier on when we were breaking into the geode, I mean, look at this, I'll loop it back. You see how quick that is? Uh, it's way too easy to accidentally like over mine with a super good pickaxe. We'll save the good pickaxe for later on, once we have the farm set up. And so lads, I think I just about explained it all. This process that I'm about to take on, it's going to be mildly time consuming, slightly stressful, and I... <sighs> so look, I've been doing YouTube for a minute now, I can multitask, I can talk and do things, but I can also talk and do things wrong. Amethyst Diggles, let's go. All the way back up in the surface as the rain sets in i do believe i have some updates to show you guys so in the last episode we went crazy with interior design right after that in between episodes another thing i do burr and you put the carpet to match you too you say you curse this house because it was empty for so long you liked it like that oh no well, anyways, I did a little bit of decor on the porch. I think it looks a little bit better. Sliding into the house. Oh, Bunzo, protecting the house. Such a good boy. I put a carpet in the kitchen, and it makes sense. Just trust me. I don't think I changed anything over here. But then over here, lanterns on the ceiling. The lanterns look pretty good, and speaking of look good, bamboo. All right, so believe it or not, I've already done it. I did so much digging and mining down below the ground and got it really cleaned up. I wanted to run all the way back up to the surface to grab a couple different build supplies for this next big step. I was dreaming of it. I, I don't haven't tested it, but I was dreaming of it that bamboo with the amethyst might look kind of fire and go hard. Like purple and yellow, they're what? Contrasting colors on a color wheel or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, maybe it'll make them look pretty good together. 
We're gonna bring a lot of bamboo. Another big thing I'm hoping and dreaming of big time is definitely a bubble elevator up and down. We're gonna get that in by the end of the episode, which means I need kelp. I know I have it somewhere. Aha, there's some kelp. Hopefully that'll do. You finally here, I think I'm gonna need to do a little bit of smelting as well. So I'll bring some lava and I'll do that later. Anyways, 1037, 1438, 1438, 1037, 1037, 1438. That block allegedly. Allegedly speaking, if that's it, then I think this one should be, no, 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 no. That's it, that's it right there, I got it. That should be the, the down one. I think I wanna make down go right there, and then I'll have like up right over here. Allegedly speaking, if my numbers are numbering perfectly correctly, I should be able to dig straight down right here. Mm, I don't want that cold, that's tempting. But I, I should be able to dig straight down right here and land smack dab in the middle of my beautiful amethyst geo. One quick little spin later, and just like that, the most annoying part of the project by far is fully finished. I've now got a handy little elevator that goes all the way down from the bottom, straight back up to the top, and round again. Now down here, when clearing out this whole big project today, look at that, almost a full chest, and technically speaking, I didn't even fully finish clearing it out. Like, there's a lot of basalt in there, and there's some calcite here too. I was taking a look at the amethyst while I was clearing it out here, and I kind of determined that basically this spot right here is dead center. Then I was walking around and looking here, and I went out this way. This is like the farthest way the amethyst clusters stretch, seven blocks. What I was imagining with this room is a room that is seven blocks out from the center. The seven blocks out from the center? I was gonna put this wall right here and look at this. It actually opens straight up to the mine shafts. What if maybe instead of fully closing off this geode, somehow I designed a door that goes from the amethyst geode straight back out to the mine shaft. After all, when I did the cave spider farm a couple episodes ago, there's no mine shaft access at all. Now while I was doing my grinding down here, you know, clearing out all the plain old classic amethyst blocks to make room for the budding amethyst blocks, I found that some of the amethyst blocks, they were actually touching the other amethyst blocks, like this one right here. I could, I guess, like pull this one out with my pickaxe, but then I would lose a whole lot of faces. It's better to have the budding amethyst blocks if they're touching, just like stay touching. The other faces make up for it. Huh, now seven blocks, seven blocks. I don't know, I, I'm gonna go seven blocks out in every direction for sure. I was imagining what if maybe we could have a grand big circle inside of this thing. Yeah, I'm thinking about circles, doing the quick math in my head a little bit here. I think if I wanted to do a, a seven block circle, I would go out seven blocks and then maybe five blocks right there. Then I will spin around and do it again. So, so far, that'll put my big open area looking like that. Then I have this small quarter to try and figure out here. What if I maybe, when I don't know, like three blocks, three is a good number, could do a cool wall design with it. If I went ahead and went three blocks, oh, that's it, that's it, I'm a genius, the biggest, smartest person in the, in the entire world. Yeah, 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 seven, five blocks right there. Three blocks, that's one in the quarter. Three, five, and spin it all around again. <laughs> that's a whole lot of spinning today. Aesthetics, aesthetics. Ah, the copper with the bamboo with the purple amethyst block that might go so hard in here. That might look like stunningly gorgeous, perfectly beautiful, and everything like that. Ah, seven blocks. I can't talk while I'm, uh, while I'm digging. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this one goes out right there. So let's see. We do our little three block thing right there. Then this should be the corner. Then this pops out, and I do a three block thing again right there. And then boom, I get the proper wall itself, the exit, the entrance that I already kind of carved out for us. That's gonna be perfect. So I'll go up and down right there. Then all I have to do is go ahead and do one more circle, one more turn. I mean, look how hard could it be? All right, so look, when I was moving down here to do this whole operation, I don't know why I didn't think to maybe grab a little bit more of the copper that was perhaps already set up and good to go. Like I'm talking all of my copper blocks that I have up top, I don't think I, I just looked at them and grabbed the ingots instead. We're gonna use cut copper all over the floor, but to actually maximize this even more, I think I could take the cut copper and cut it in half. I was also definitely thinking about coming back in here and doing some cool designs on the floor with maybe like staircases and definitely some light blocks in here as well, but I'd come back to those later. Now this block right here, this is like the lowest one in the entire geode as you can see. I was thinking that I'm okay with maybe losing one face of this thing, it's not that big of a deal. After all, look at all, this is going insane in here. I'll lose one face and actually have this thing maybe like 
just clean, flat out, sitting straight on the floor. I think it might actually look kind of cool. Also, I was considering how beautiful this uh, this calcite block really is, and how I won't, unfortunately, be able to get very much more of this easy. I don't have any mountains nearby with it, which means I need to save your at all, and dig it all up from under the floor, and keep it. You know what's funny is, uh, using all this copper, and I feel like on every single build that I've used copper, I say, oh boy, oh golly, God, I'm not going to be able to finish it today, today because I want it to be fully oxidized, oxidized, you know, stuff, stuff like that. that. Ah, <laughs> at that rate, I, I might as well, like, get around to eventually here, like, building a proper oxidization zone, station, <laughs> something like that, and just, like, do this in between episodes, so then I, eventually I can just build a build with copper, and it's, boom, voila, fully finished. Ah, I get around to it eventually. Huh, bamboo, 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 and in its green, raw, natural form, it would look like, like we'll put it like that. It would look, but I think bamboo, and it's maybe slightly less raw, a little bit less natural form of yellow. Oh, yellow bamboo wood inside of this thing could look really, really good. This is the side where I'm imagining like a door, so we could exit this whole area and go out to the mine shaft. What I think I'm probably gonna have to do is like push the mine shaft out a little bit more, so it's like you know fully connects and everything like that. But that'll be good. Then what I was imagining is maybe going around this thing as well. We do a little bit more bamboo, like a bamboo ring, basically. So I was imagining this bamboo ring wrapping all the way around the entire amethyst circle down here. I think that'll look cool. It'll be like a good solid base on the build. Ooh, maybe we could switch it up and swing in here with some staircases as well. Maybe staircases could look pretty cool. I'll probably end up doing something really different there. And then definitely on that wall, I'm going to have to figure out something different as well. Staircases go like this to start to like transition into the top part of the build. I'll probably end up being able to see that small little uh, bamboo spot right there. So we'll go ahead and fill that in as well. Solid it up, make it look really, really good. After that, the geode. I think I'm going to continue pulling this out and make it nice and tall. After all, this room needs to contain every single one of these blocks. What I basically want to be able to do is whenever I need amethyst, I jump down here, land in the water right there. Infinite water source, by the way. But I land there, then I go ahead and move into the room, and I'm safe, and I can dig out all of the amethyst. So we need a nice, tall, a grand room. Now, what is the amethyst built out of? It's built out of amethyst, it's built out of basalt, and oh, it's built out of oh, this beautiful calcite block right here. What if maybe I could place calcite on the wall like this, like almost create a small arch in this perfect five block section. Imagine that. You get a calcite arch right there, and then maybe on the curve, I try and like almost replicate it. I think I could probably pull that off. I would just like start with like calcite going up and then curve it around the curve there, right? So you get a curve and an arch. Oh, I'm just spoiling you guys today with these beautiful builds, right? Ah, a curve and an arch. That's a dream come true. Yeah, that's it. A curve and an arch that'll end up looking so good. We got the classic arch on the flat wall. And then on the corner in these curves, we have like ah, a curve and an arch going up like that. That looks really, really cool. It makes like a nice border all the way around this room. I'll come in and again. I, I'll still get to go back to that wall and fix it up later. I promise. Maybe even on these arches to have them like properly connect. I could hang it into the room a little bit. So like, you know, connect those corners like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited. I think that'll look really good. But then, finally, there is one thing, the icing on the cake, that needs to happen in this lower part of the chamber. I'm gonna have a flat wall right there, and before it was all plain old stone, why in the world would it be plain stone when we're working inside of an amethyst? Obviously, to finish off the amethyst and get the yellow with the purple, we go ahead and put the most musical block of all time in here. We slap that in there, and I'll probably go ahead and slap it in the corners as well, and I think just like that, that'll look really, really good. I could even silk touch some of these smaller stages of this growth over here and put it on the wall. All right, so hold up. I said silk touch. I said I could silk touch some of these things that are still growing and put them on the wall. If you harvest the amethyst bud before it's fully finished with silk touch, you will get whatever stage it was at when you mined it. Then you could place that on amethyst block, and as long as it's not placed on budding amethyst block, it will never grow. And to actually make this even more cool, it doesn't just have to be an amethyst block either. You can put it on the floor like that if you want. It does kind of bump you up a little bit when you walk out of those, so maybe not the best idea. Another cool thing with this thing is it's going to give off a little bit of light. Each phase, each stage of amethyst growth will give off a different amount of light. The first one gives off a light level 1. The fully grown one, that'll give off a light level 5. I guess, theoretically, I could harvest these things, run around inside of the mineshaft, and yeah, light it all up like that. 
Oh man, so far today, I am so happy with how this amethyst farm is turning out. I think it's survival in total. Since the geode was added, I've built maybe three or two amethyst farms, and I think by far, hands down, this is my favorite one. The aesthetic, the colors, and everything. And oh, wait, what's that? The farm. You want to know how to finish the farm? Oh. Ah, yeah, sorry about that. I, I kind of forgot. The Amethyst Geode Farm, this beauty right here. After you've gone ahead and dug out all of your Amethyst block all over this thing, and maybe even started decorating the thing up, make it look really, really good, well, the farm for today, it's technically fully finished. Aesthetics, absolutely not. I'm gonna finish that up, make it look good, but the farm itself is fully done once you've uncovered every side of every single budding Amethyst block and hopefully lost none. To use the farm, all you need to do is wait for the amethyst to grow all the way up. If you harvest it before it's done, you'll get nothing, unfortunately. You wait for it to grow all the way up and harvest it with a plain old normal pickaxe, no enchantments. And every time, you'll get four amethyst shards. You can then turn them into a block if you wanted to. Or like a spyglass. I don't know. Four amethyst shard total if I harvest one of these things with a pickaxe. And that's going to happen every single time, no matter what type of pickaxe you use. Alternatively, if you let this thing grow all the way up and wanted to use a piston... Well, you can use a piston to harvest that, but it's going to be two amethyst shard every time instead of the four that you'll get from a pickaxe. So when it comes to automation of these farms, totally, you could go ahead and automate this entire thing, but you, what if I told you fortune, enchantments, they get actually absolutely insane here. Insane to the point of automation not making any sense at all. My handy little pickaxe right here, this buddy has fortune three on it. That's going to mean if I'm lucky, I have the chance to get up to 16 Amethyst shard 16 no way yeah it calls it 16 amethyst shard when I harvest one of these things now of course 16 it's not no okay it'll happen every time no 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 it won't happen every single time you're not always that lucky other times you'll end up getting four eight or twelve amethyst shard with fortune three every time you harvest one of these things you've got a 20% chance to get 16 20 12 and 28 if I have fortune two on my pickaxe I could get either four eight or twelve and if I had fortune one I get four or eight. Hands down, look, fortune is the single, the only, the true way to go. If you want to harvest these things efficiently, you got to do it manually with a fortune pickaxe. Always. But you also have to be very, very careful. If you wanted to go through the grind, it's not a terrible idea to get, say, like a fortune three iron pickaxe and use that for only harvesting the amethyst. It's way too easy to accidentally break too many. You got to pay like high attention. And in my opinion, you harvest them from the side, kind of like that. So no accidents can ever happen with the block behind it. For your super simple, easy, ultimate, basic amethyst farm, that's actually just about it, though. That's all you would have to do is clear it out, then run around with a pickaxe and harvest and things. For the ones higher up, I mean, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But for these low ones, easy as that. And just like that, my friends, my wonderfully amazing, perfect friends, we've set up uh, just about the best glass-making machine in the entire world. This thing is going to be a dream come true. You know what I think I'm going to do? I, I kind of can't believe it, but I think I'm actually going to make my very first stripped signs of the world. They're so expensive. It's so painful. And I, yes, I was going to say I better need those blocks. It's so expensive and so painful, but at the least, I, I guess at least we get like six of them. I want hanging sign right there, and I want hanging sign right there. That's so cool. Now, while we go ahead and finish up a little bit of detailing before we wrap up this episode, I would like to talk about today's comment of the day. In the last episode, when we were building a nether road, I heard one of the most terrifying sounds of all time. This comment right here breaks down the whole sound anxiety mechanically, literally perfectly. <laughs> I gotta be honest, I did not fully realize there was a, a literal anxiety mechanic built into Minecraft as if the real life mechanic wasn't enough. <laughs> Still though, either way, the sound that I heard while recording that episode was unearthly. It was terrifying. Thought this was like a relaxing game, like Stardew Valley. I, on a different note, I've been obsessed with that lately, but hey, anyway, anyways, you probably want me to wrap the episode up. Let's go ahead and see what I've done. All right, and so one mega time lapse later, and we're back at it with tons and tons of details here. I've been going kind of crazy when it comes to the interior of this space here. I was thinking the yellow, the bamboo, we could like mix it and blend it with the amethyst, that would look cool. I also added some windows on these sides that I'm not currently using. 
keyword currently. It's actually kind of insane and kind of sad how expensive some of this uh, bamboo stuff is. I guess it's kind of like copper though, where it's like you can get a lot of bamboo really, really easily. Now for the ceiling of the geode, I really like what I came up with. I think the best angle of the thing is probably over here. What I decided to do is go and cover up every single stone, granite, whatever block that I could see. This makes this almost feel like a gigantic geode to me. I decided to leave streaks of calcite up on the top because I feel like it's like, I don't know, makes it a little bit more natural feeling or something like that. I'm still not 100% sold on the calcite at the top though, so you let me know what you think. Should I pull it out or should I leave it? I feel like leaving it in there makes it like accented, but yeah, you let me know. The entrance and the exit. I came in here with the tinted amethyst glass and kind of made like a little window so you could see like if somebody was dropping down or if somebody was rocketing up. I think it looks pretty cool. I also made this arch a little bit taller to make it feel a little bit more cobblestone. I said it before I will say it again today working on this project I have had so much fun I love building things under the ground I don't do it enough like rooms building things like that under the ground it's just like it's cool it's nice now speaking over the ground this spot uh, dead center I came up with it I went up to the surface and was taking a look at light options that I have and I, I do have glowstone but how about shroom light I literally never use this block either let's go ahead and make this uh, build like <laughs> a ton of blocks that I don't usually use I'm an honest man. I'm an honest and I'm a consistent man. I hate this block that I'm touching right now. I hate it. I hate it. But what did I just say? I'm going to make this build blocks that I don't usually use. I hate this block. Not only do I hate it because I can't reach. I can't place it high enough. But it's just disgusting looking. At the same time though, this could be a whole lot more nice of a light source than like torches sitting in here. So I regretfully, partially regretfully was thinking until they give me the option, the, the devs did this to me. The devs forced me to use this terrible looking block because they did not give me a calcite wall. We got a tough wall coming soon, but where's the calcite wall? Anyways, I have no option. I will go ahead and use wall right here and hang light off of wall just like that to make it nice and bright. Then the torches that are sitting around on the ground, I think I can probably get rid of them. I don't need to have them. Oh yeah, on the ground, I put a detail here. Check it. Yeah, there we go. With a bunch of lights hanging all around this thing. No more torches are on the ground, and it's like literally perfect. I think we'll go ahead and put our final one over here, and then I need to... Oh, that's going to be a little awkward. Never mind. I guess I could do that. Hmm. I'll skip it over here. Anyways, I need to figure out what I'm doing with the top of the geode over here. I have a couple torches sitting around because, of course, I'm going to have, like, dark ledges in there. But now that I have the shroom light in here, I might be able to just pull these torches out. As long as the light level isn't zero, I think we'll be safe. It's really creepers that I care about, after all. Looking at it now, the top might end up being a little dark, though. I think it probably wouldn't hurt if I hung, like, maybe one, two lights up high. Three is a better number. Now look, I don't know about you, I know these things have been in the game for a long time, but I still get confused to this day with like the growth stages, everything like that. What I was thinking is maybe we'll have a table over here with like an example of what a fully finished one looks like. To me, I don't know, like sometimes depending on the angle, like these partially finished ones, they just strip me up a little bit. Like, it almost looks ready, right? I don't know. Hey, it's just me. I also brought a little bit of bricks down here because you know me, I'm obsessed with these pots. These pots are so beautiful looking. I was imagining maybe a couple pods sitting around inside of this room too, and well, that's just about it. Oh God, what have I done? Heading back up to the land to get the few final pieces of the puzzle today, I'd like to send a huge thank you to my patrons. Pixie Phantom, Clay S, Nick C, Arlo, AKA Bobby Bobby, MinecraftMojo.com, you're the best. Putting the uh, icing on the cake for today's build, believe it or not, is gonna be really, really simple. There are two final things I'd like to mention. Thing number one, the scaffolding. We don't really need a lot. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and make everything that I can right there. Six, you should be fine. Amethyst farms are pretty great because they're not only insanely, insanely easy to build, but super easy to use too. As long as you run around inside of this farm and every single time you're ready to harvest something, use Fortune 3, you're gonna get profits on profits on profits. Even if you don't get 16 every time, it'll rake up pretty quickly. But one of the most annoying things about an Amethyst Geode farm is the fact that a Geode is tall and you are but just a small, short king. In order to be able to reach all of this up really, really high up high, or in other words, like over half of the crystals, then scaffolding. The number one optional thing for an Amethyst farm is scaffolding. 
with a little bit of scaffolding, I can easily move around in this farm and harvest all the crystals. Another thing is, I uh, suppose, obviously, your budding amethyst blocks aren't going to move. So you could totally figure out, like, a proper way to put all of your scaffolding and just leave it there inside of your farm if you wanted to. With how perfectly compatible scaffolding is with his farms, it's almost like this stuff was literally added to the game for an amethyst farm. Absolutely, make some scaffolding and maybe even just store it inside of your amethyst farm so anytime you're ready to harvest the stuff, you got the scaffolding here waiting for you. The other thing that I need to do to finish up the farm is a proper door. Finally, at long last, the door. I went ahead and opened this up to the mine shaft a little bit. There's still a lot more that I need to explore and absolutely a lot more ore that I need to extract as well. For now, something like this is going to be pretty much perfect, though. Now oh, it's nice and safe. Hi, Amethyst Farm. Sweet, sweet, beautiful, amazing Amethyst Farm. That's it. That's how it's done. It's so easy. Next episode, I think, is the conclusion of Operation Hollow. And this wasn't really even initially even planned as part of the operation, but sandwich in the middle, so we'll include it. Why not? Anyways, so thank you all so much for watching the floor. I'm going to go ahead and let it oxidize and maybe even use this thing a little bit in between episodes. These are all of the extra geode blocks that I have is wonderful. And then random blocks that I need to bring up to the surface. I'll do it now. Thanks for watching, everybody. Like, subscribe. It's been me, Waddles. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.